I could not be here breathing and be comfortable if I was really as bad as they was making, you know, and nobody could be around me. So for me to be this calm, I must have some kind of inner peace. And my inner peace is knowing that once everybody takes the time to really see what type of person I am, you'd be surprised that I stuck around this long. I have to make the life that I do live as happy as I can and try to do the best with what I have. Do, you know, live the best life I can live, be as happy as I can be. N nothing is perfect for anybody. I don't know. Boys, I swear, I think I figured it out. You know why they don't want us redneck brothers and sisters and the hood brothers and sisters getting along? You know why? Because we'd be unstoppable. I'm telling you right now, we would shut shit down. I'm not a bully. I try to be fair. If you literally understand my advocacy and the way I approach it, if you are not doing anything wrong, I'm going to say, hey, I don't find any reason to be here. But if y'all remember, everybody was mad at me at first because I kept saying, I kept saying what? I'm not here for Tiffany. I want her to speak on this Andrew situation. And y'all, we got what we got. So with that being said, y'all, I don't even know if I'm going to be able to have any control over this show any further because the GOAT herself is about to show up. But I can talk to her about last night well y'all none other than one of my favorite people that i didn't met since i've been dealing with this situation <laughs> Peter. hey hey everybody how are you how are you i'm fine i'm fine i'm sorry for you know showing my whole behind on in living color last night but you know how it is when it comes to these kids so mm -mm. Mm -hmm. That's one thing I don't play about. Did you go get a massage after that one? <laughs> I feel like I feel like I feel like you gotta have people massaging your shoulders, and you gotta loosen up. <laughs> like, I Listen, I mean, when I tell you, my husband was like, "You did what?" But it's all love, you know, it's all good. I mean, I meant everything I said. Let me be real clear. I stand on it. I meant everything I said. I actually, I'm sitting here reading um, the interview um, that uh, Mr. Michael Smith had where he admitted that he was um, having phone conversations with this young lady at one o'clock in the morning. Mm -hmm. What? Yeah, it's right there. I'm getting ready to send it to you. I just wanted to verify the page number so it's coming to you right now you see that came on here dropping more bomb bombs <laughs> <laughs> wait what explain what you're gonna show us again so what i'm gonna send you is the um the incident report that you have so i did a little digging on that incident report since he stated that he wasn't found on any charges and that he didn't do anything wrong well the reality of the matter is this he admitted to being on the phone with this young girl who's 14 years old at 1 and 2 a.m. in the morning, a student at the high school. These are his words. What I just sent you is page five. I literally have no idea the age. You just brought something to my attention that pisses mm -hmm. me off even more. 14-year-old student. She's 15. Let's be fair. Um, it says the on March 18, 2018, Executive Director of Human Resources and the Executive Director of Student Services held a fact finding meeting with Mr. Michael Smith, Dean Assistant at the Center of Alternative Learning, to discuss the allegations that he interacted inappropriately with a 15 year old female student. Wait, where? Where did you send this to? I just emailed it to you. Oh, you emailed it. Okay. Y'all give us a second. You can continue talking. We're going to get it up on the screen. Okay. So, in the uh, document. Hey, sorry, sorry. Page what? It's page five. Well, it says page two at the bottom of the sheet, but it's page five of the attachment that I sent you. At it. the bottom, it says page two. And you see where it's, if you look at page one, where it says fact-finding interview, employee statement. We got it. Let's get it on the screen, y'all. <clears throat> Go ahead. You can, you can, you can continue. All right. So he claimed. So, <clears throat> so basically, the student was on her final day at the school. 
the 15 year old at the alternative high school. On the final day, the student and her parents stopped him and asked, you know, Mike Smith about the student. He claimed that he explained the rationale and everything that was going on. On more than one occasion, he mentioned that he had never spoken with the student, right? So if you go on in here, and then they said, when asked again if he contacted the student via any social media outlet, Snapchat, Facebook, Twitter, etc., he continued to deny any contact with the student on any social media outlets. And then Mr. Smith was asked <clears throat> if he recalled to telling two administrators that he had been, in fact, in contact with the student via Snapchat, to which he denied the conversation. He explained that the allegations were made based on a negative relationship between him and a male student. Mm. And uh, listen, he was... No, no, you're good. You're good. Hey. Mm -hmm. Oh, you can hear the producer? Yeah. I'm so sorry. Okay, it's on the screen. You can go ahead. Okay. So if you scroll down, it says Mr. Smith explained that the allegations were made based on a negative relationship between him and a male student who brought the matter to the attention of the administration. Mm -hmm. So in this exchange, he admits that he had talked to this student. Here it is. So you see where it says other statements, supporting documents attached, student and parent. Assistant Principal Dean Walker reviewed that the blank campus, the student submitted a written statement outlining interactions between her and Mr. Smith via Snapchat. Snapchat. The student statement concluded her interpretation of the interactions with Mr. Smith as he recalled him making inappropriate comments to her concerning watching X-rated videos and showed the interest in making her his girlfriend. According to the student, this communication occurred around 1 a.m. Fifteen years old. One a.m. So when they go back and they ask Mr. Smith, if you scroll down, it gets deeper. Then he admits that he's talking to the student at 1 a.m. But then he's saying that he didn't say anything about being a girlfriend. Why are you talking to a 15-year-old at 1 a.m.? So keep in mind, I know this information. So when you send me those type of text messages where you thought you were trying to be funny and antagonizing and you're, you're saying these things about my child and what she would be doing in the back of a, a, you know, to an elected official in the back of a restaurant. That lets me know that you're a sick individual. The fact that you can think something like that is a problem. If you have the mentality to think something like that, is something wrong with you. So that's what triggered me. So yesterday when I got, I got like five or six text messages, right? From different people like, you know, Mike Smith is on a live. He's talking about you. He's stating that I got him fired from a job. And here's the funny part about all that. During this time that he thought I got him fired from this echo position, I was in Belize. And I didn't even have phone service. <laughs> so I was completely away from the world celebrating my birthday with my husband. So, and what, why would I be thinking about Mike Smith? <laughs> like, let's just be honest. Like, come on now. <laughs> I have no interest, motivation, nor desire to think about a Mike Smith. So he is in his feelings thinking that, you know, I got him fired from this job. And in which case, I don't know this man. I didn't know where he worked or anything of the sort. So I would never spend time, right? Mm -hmm. um, um, reciting any of him, his talking because he's proven himself to be a liar. Mm -hmm. I don't, we don't, I would never want to say, oh, well, Michael Smith, Smith said this because he has no credibility. But what I want to, you said that Michael Smith, uh, 
inappropriately engaged your daughter. Mm -hmm. Yeah, what I said was he sent. I want to. I'm gonna send you the messages, but we can't to protect people who he was suggesting. Tell he us, stated us. that my daughter was. I can just be frank on your page. My daughter was sucking the penis of an elected official and she will be sucking his penis as well. My daughter is 13 years old. She's 13 years old and, and of the utmost innocence. So if you were just trying to troll or if you was just trying to do any of that, that I don't play like that. And then you sent it to me, ironically, one o'clock in the morning. Same time frame. Mm hmm. So when these text messages were coming in, at first they started coming in saying stuff like, you know, I'm a bitch. I should just die and all this other stuff. Right. I can take that, you know, whatever. But then at one o'clock in the morning, you're sending me these messages about my daughter, my 13 year old daughter. In that manner. So by that time, I had already did my investigative research and I found out who it is. So I responded back to him by name. He never texts me again. <laughs> <laughs> now, next thing you know, his bandwidth, you know, I got his IP address. I had everything by this point. So he tried to take the app off of his phone. I had his iCloud, everything right by this point. So, you know, he tried to take everything down and I, I had already, when the text came in, just harassing me, I had already started to, you know, i had already made my police file, my police report. You know, I did all the proper stuff that I needed to do. But when he sent that party in, I can even tell you where he was when he sent the message. He was in front of McDonald's on um, Dixie Highway in Sibley when he sent the message. Like, don't play with me. You know what I'm saying? <laughs> One o'clock in the morning. One o'clock in the morning. He probably was either leaving or on his way to Arnie's or whatever. <laughs> because yeah. I doubted that he could please that big woman with that look. <laughs> okay. So with that being said, this is enough circumstantial evidence and information for people to consider. But I think that this is so interesting. And I, I applaud you and I appreciate you for coming on. Is because you have literally, literally almost said nothing. You could have mm -hmm. obliterated a lot of them clearly mm -hmm. a long time ago. What is your staying power? Why aren't you fucking them up? Well, I look at it like this. They're doing it themselves. So, you know, if the proper channel, I think that's the way, I think you're going to catch my drift. If the proper channel reach out to me with questions and, and, and have questions and things of that sort, I'm going to comply and I'm going to tell them what I know. But I don't have to be the loudest one in the room. So that being said, I don't, you know, it's not, it's not, they're, they're doing enough work tearing themselves down and destroying themselves. I don't need to do it for you. Your team is doing it for you. What he did yesterday was problematic because he went on an attack on four people that don't even rock with him like that. You, me, you know, Stephanie and others. Yeah. He, he went at all these people who, who can care less about this man. And all, he don't understand when you do that, you put a dot on her back. Because quite naturally, people are going to think that it's her sending her minions to do it on her behalf. So he made her look bad. Now, I need to respond to T Sales. Can we put that, click that comment and put that on the, put that comment up. T Sales says, loudest one in the room is the weakest. And I yeah. thank you and to Nikita because she just signed on. No, the loudest one in the room might be a Leo. <laughs> But you know what? There's always an exception to every rule. There's a, and Leo's, let me tell you, some of my favorite people, and you know how I feel like about you. Like, I don't know. When we met, we just, we just vibe, right? Oh, and you that. are team too much, and I am here for all of it. <laughs> I am. <laughs> Sometimes I have to pull you back, like, <laughs> yeah. That's so tough and interesting because we met in this ordeal. We didn't know each other before, but they mm -mm. keep on trying to push this narrative that we work together, that I work Yeah. Together. Is it that? No. 
And it's funny because what people, and then when you reached out to me, people were expecting me to go dog Tiffany out and dog out other people. And I think you said I was one of the one people, one of the one first people that just didn't. I gave a different perspective. That's not to say that she didn't do the things that, you know, they're accusing her of doing. That's not to say that she did. I don't know a lot of the stuff. However, I'll say this. I can only speak on my experience and the facts that are in my face. And it looks shaky. Okay. And so you all hear it, heard it right here. This is a more poised, elegant, focused Dr. Nikita. <laughs> Don't bring up her kids and don't disrespect her because the woman last night, you was you you was on that ass. You was Man, there. listen, I do not play about my kids. I don't play about my husband. And you know that and those, those are things I don't play about. So I would I would turn into a different animal and the same beast. And last night I was on something else. And when I tell you, I even calmed down on the show. I think that's the Capricorn in me that, you know, I could be an asshole. I really, really can. And I'm that person that don't take me there because it can be very bad for you and I let myself go there and I felt bad because it's literally my job to tell people when they're going too far and not to respond and things of that sort but now it's a learning opportunity for me because I get it now you know what I'm saying it's like now I get it sometimes you just gotta go there and take off your as someone said in the um in the group Take off your earrings and, and let them know that, no, don't let these degrees fool you. I'm still from the streets. And I had to do that because with, with Mr. Smith, Mike, that boy, I'm not going to call him a man because he's not. That boy has been antagonizing for months and nobody has done nothing to him. It's something in here and up here. And he needs to get that under control because I'm going to tell you, doing the stuff that he's doing, somebody's going to get hurt. And I'm not saying that to put out a threat, but I'm just saying, you know, it is what it is. The way he antagonized people, the way he lied, and the way he groom and go at children and things of that sort, he can get hurt. Because what if I wasn't level-headed and decided to take the legal route? You get what I'm saying? We all concealed and carry holders. What if I was that person I showed up at that man's house? You know, that it could have went that way. We got people who care about us. I got five brothers. I got a husband. You ain't said nothing. Cousin. You ain't said nothing wrong. And you got me. I Facts. Got Facts. <laughs> so man, listen, we saw you at the Trump rally. You ended the whole rally. Trump wasn't getting no votes in Chicago. Not one. <laughs> <laughs> So I think that, you know, this is the last thing that I want to ask you because I think it's so important that people understand this. You were, you were the chief of staff for the mayor. Yes. Tiffany Hino, you were the chief of staff. But you're one of the one, of, you're one of the few people who actually quit long yes. time. Can you kind of give us a little insight for those who don't know why you quit? You had a good job. You was making a ton of money. You could have gotten a lot of free stuff like everybody else. What happened? Yeah, no, you know, her and, and the long and short story, I'm going to tell you what happened, but I, I ended it with her. My morals was not in line with her integrity at the end of the day. So basically when I first started working with um, Tiffany, first of all, I didn't know her from a can of paint. Let me just put that out there. I don't know. You know, I know people be thinking, oh, she hired all her friends. She actually outsourced me to... Um, come and handle public relations for her for um, she was dealing with a controversy because it, it was coming right off of the brink of the young baby Alexis Wilson being shot and murdered by Dalton police. So when that came in during that time, people were protesting her home and all of that because she had made some stupid statements online, right on or to the, to the media about um, young Alexis. And she mentioned to me that someone had given her that statement where I later found out that wasn't true. So um, I'm working with her. I'm doing public relations. But then she told me that she had a little bit of strife with her board and that they did not 
get, they didn't want to give me a contract for public relations. So during that time, the person quit who was serving as her chief of staff. So she asked, because I have a public relations background, plus I got the education and things of that sort, would I mind just kind of moving into that role? And that way I can just oversee the mayor's office, the day to day, you know, still work on her image and all of that. Cause it still kind of goes under the chief of staff, um, umbrella. And I told her, sure. So once I did that, um, everything seemed to be okay. I did notice that Tiffany lied a lot. You're not even, I'm not even going to say lie. She, well, it's lie. Let me be clear. It's a lie, but she would do things like she will tell, talk to a person and tell them, Oh, I'll do this for you. Yeah, I'll do that for you. And be telling a bold faced lie. Cause as soon as they turn around, she'd be like, I ain't giving her shit or, you know, that type of stuff. Or I've seen her do that with other elected officials where, you know, her integrity just wasn't right. It's like you would look this person in the face and these were people that are actually still in her camp now that was on these federal subpoenas and they're going to probably take some L's for her and quite as kept, she don't even really like them. So um, she started to What's do, okay, so Zuccarelli, Frank Zuccarelli, the um, supervisor, he ended up passing away January 3rd. Are you on there still, Jedediah? Okay. So basically, um, Frank Zuccarelli passed away January 3rd, and that's when things started to take a turn. So during that time, um, you know, I believe that she started to get a little power high, you know, her personality is changing. Now she want a full-time stylist. Um, you know, now she want to go to all these places and, you know, we got to act like she's, you know, Michelle Obama or Lori Lightfoot, you know, the whole kid and caboodle. And, you know, I have no problem with doing that. You know, I have clients who are quote unquote, you know, divas for all intents and purposes, and I'm okay with that. However, I noticed a shift in her level of respect for people, the residents. And um, I've noticed some things that she was doing that was a little unorthodox, in my opinion. I don't want to get too much into that because I know it's a legal situation right now. But um, I started noticing things that just was not on the up and up. And then she brought in this village administrator. His name is Keith Freeman. And that's when things got the worst because he was encouraging her bullshit. Just I don't know any other way to put it. So with Keith Freeman, he would, you know, like, I'll tell her, like, you can't do this. That's not ethical, blah, blah, blah. And then um, he will tell her that you can do it, if that makes sense. So now we're finding ourselves in this power struggle where he's encouraging the bad behavior and I'm trying to advise her to do the right thing. That didn't work. So after a while, you know, things went on and then there was a blow up. And at that point, what I'm not going to do, I don't care how much you're paying me. I don't care about any of that. When you're doing that, I can't, I can't rock with you. So I walked away. Isn't, I mean, because my integrity means more to me than a paycheck. And what you're not going to do is put me in jail with you. And I just noticed a lot of stuff. So I went on Chuck Deuces with the people and I'm like, no, I'm cool. And, you know, it, it caused some, you know, some strife because some of my people were still kind of cool with her and they, you know, it kind of made people have to want to try to choose sides. And I would never tell my friends to do that. But again, that's just kind of what happened. Oh, no problem. Mm -hmm. because here's the thing a lot of people will get on okay all right so yeah so um what the producer asked was for me i mentioned yesterday on this interview about how i was devastated with um you know henyard and how everything played out and because she did have the potential to do the right thing and the reason why i said that is i mean the vision she had a vision and her vision was solid and it was taking care of the people and, you know, having a good time and bringing back things that Dalton didn't have since, you know, the Shaw era. Right. So she she had a good vision. 
but she lost that vision and she decided that she was bigger than the bitch. You back, bang? I'm back. I have no idea what happened. <laughs> <laughs> I've had to change. change. Mm -hmm. And Jed and I have had that con had this conversation before. So it's like um, I felt that she had the potential. What did, was she green and she needed some polishing and things of that sort? Absolutely. But I believe she had the vision and she knew what she wanted. But I believe that her 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 greed and her ego it kind of blurred the vision and it. It just didn't allow, like the not working with your board, not following, you know, governmental protocol, things of that sort. That's an issue. Not only is it unethical and illegal, it's just problematic to the community because at the end of the day, the only people that really suffer are the business owners and the residents. And what, what, and I'm gonna, I'm gonna, well, well, let me say this, Dr. Nikita. I want to thank you for. Uh, you are definitely a PR person for the for the for the for the, for the record because you held it down like you kept talking. You 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 held it, and I, and I appreciate you. So I just want to thank you for coming on. I don't know if you want if 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 you don't mind standing by, maybe you come back. But I want to let some of these other people been sitting. Yeah, there no, go ahead, do your thing, baby. Shoot me on, a message. I got my phone on. I'm sitting here watching. I wanna, um, you. Hey. Let me tell you something. I think Michael Smith. Is gone. I don't. I don't foresee Michael Smith recovering or coming back out after that. So, on behalf of all of us, thank you <laughs> for that royal ass whooping. Uh, and I think this, I think this should become a movie, and they definitely got to put a scene in there with that. <laughs> I could not be here breathing and be comfortable if I was really as bad as they was making. You know, nobody could be around me. So for me to be this calm, I must have some kind of inner peace. And my inner peace is knowing that once everybody takes the time to really see what type of person I am, you'd be surprised that I stuck around this long. I have to make the life that I do live as happy as I can and try to do the best with what I have. Do, you know, live the best life I can live, be as happy as I can be. N nothing is perfect for anybody. I don't know. Boys, I swear, I think I figured it out. You know why they don't want us redneck brothers and sisters and the hood brothers and sisters getting along? You know why? Because we'd be unstoppable. I'm telling you right now, we would shut shit down. The real estate market often seems like a distant world where only an elite of experts is successful. In a time of so much uncertainty in the air and bad news, realist investing can seem intimidating. But today, I want to tell you that if you make the right decision today, you can enter the real estate market from the back door. Bad credit record? No credit at all. Do you dread the idea of having a home loan? Do you dream of owning investment properties? You are in the right place and right time because we have created a program which is a tax lien and deed investment online course of only 14 hours. This course is specially designed for people like you who have big dreams. You will learn at your own pace and everything from your home computer. This is your chance. Join our membership for $19.99 a year. What are you waiting for? Visit our website primetimehomebuyerbuyback.org and sign up today for course access.